With modern LOMs such as DeepSeek R1, you can now build completely local and free AI assistants that work with your files. And you can use applications or libraries such as Streamlit to build UIs for them. In this video, I'm going to show you a complete end-to-end -end tutorial on how to build the application that you're seeing on your screen right now. And we are going to see how such applications will allow you to create private AI assistants for your files. Hey everyone, my name is Venerin, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a completely local AI assistant that is using DeepSeek R1 to talk with your private files. We're going to be using OAMA, Streamlit, and I'm going to show you how you can parse Markdown and PDF files in order to work with those into your conversation app. Let's get started. The model that I'm going to be using is going to be the 14 billion distilled version of the DeepSeek R1 model. This model is based on Quent 2.5 and as the name suggests, it is a distilled version of the large DeepSeek R1 model. I'm going to be using OAMA to deploy and run the model itself. So if you don't know how to run or install OAMA, please go and watch one of the previous videos. This is the code for the project opened in my VS Code instance. And the structure of the project is based on the ML project template that I've shown in a previous video. I'm going to link the GitHub repository for the project template into the description of this video as well. And here you can see the dependencies that I have for this project. Those are very little. We have the OAMA client by PDFium in order to parse PDF files. And then I'm going to be using the Streamlit UI library to build the UI for our project. Here we have some dev dependencies as well, which are not strictly necessary, but in our case, they're going to be making our life a bit easier. In particular, I'm going to be using a rough as a code formatter as well. So the first thing that I want to show you is the structure of this project. We are going to be having this directory called data in which I'm going to be having the available data that I want my chatbot to use in order to converse with it. Then I have this app.py. Here I'm going to be storing the streamlit code that is going to be containing our UI application. And then with the within the code vault package, here I have the files that we're going to be using in order to power our application. We have a config file, five file loader and chatbot. Let me show first the config file. And within that file, you can see that I have this class called config and then this function configure logging, which is going to be used for the logger if you need to walk anything within the walk guru library. But the config contains the model and then the temperature that we're going to be using. Also, it contains a subclass that I'm going to be calling path. And within that class, I'm going to be linking the data directory that I'm going to be using in order to load the files. The next file that I'm going to be showing you is the file loader. And as the name suggests, here we have one important function, which is going to be called load files. And within this function, I'm going to be doing uh, one thing that is to get the contents of each file that is going to be within the data directory. But in our case, I'm going to be parsing only text markdown and PDF files. So this is the approach that I'm going to be taking. I have the patterns for each file. Uh, essentially what I do here is to take all of the dot text files, dot MD file and dot PDF files. I also have a data class which represents the file. And I just want the name of the file and then the text content or string content of the file. So what I first start with is to get the text and the markdown files or paths to those files using the glob function on the path object that I'm passed in right here, which essentially is going to be the data directory right here. And for each of those files, I'm going to get their name and then I'm going to be using the read text method in order to get the textual representation of each file. 
Next for the PDF files, I'm going to be using the extract PDF content function, which essentially what this does is using the PDF um two library, which I found to be pretty much the best and fastest way to parse PDF files in Python, at least simple files that is. And I'm going to be creating an instance to that is pointing to the file path of this project. And then I'm going to be getting the text page. And for each text page, I'm going to be essentially getting the content of the file. So this will make sure to get PDFs with multiple pages and convert everything into a one simple string to use and return the content of the PDF file. Probably the most important file within the project is the chatbot.py. And here you can find the most important function, which is ask question. This function takes a prompt or a question and then the current chat history in order to answer to the user. So what is happening under the hood is the first thing that you can see here is that I'm getting chunks from the response of the model. So I'm using streaming to not wait for the complete response, but start returning parts of the response wherever the model is ready. So I'm using each chunk and then creating our response. And since this is a thinking model, I want to get the tax for start think and end think and remove this from the history of the conversation. This is a personal favorite because uh, you might want to opt out and not do this but i found this to be effectively improving the speed of the conversation with the bot and then i'm going to be adding the response in this case again without the think tag to the chat history that we have so how do i ask the model the messages that i want first you see here that i have this message which essentially contains a role, which can be user or assistant. And then for each message, I have the content of the message, which is going to be the text of the message. And from here, you can see that I'm having this method called to dict, which is going to be representing the message into a format that the Oama chat model can understand. The next thing that you are going to see here is that I'm converting all of the messages to the messages that all Lama chat can understand and i'm calling the to dict method right here and the call for the model itself is from the all Lama library which is this function here chat and to this function i'm passing in the model that i want the messages that we have and i want to keep the model alive while i'm chatting with it so it is it will be a much faster compared to not keeping it alive I want this to stream the response, so this is why I get the chunks. And then I'm passing in a temperature that uh, is defined within the config file. So once the chunk is uh, available, I am trying to have a look at whether or not this chunk is not empty. And if the chunk is empty, I simply continue. Otherwise, I'm yielding the content of the chunk that is. So what you can see here are uh, these helper functions that uh, is for the removing of the thinking tag. This I, I already explained. And I have this other function, which I'm going to be calling create history. This will be used from our UA application in order to generate the first message that is going to be containing the information about our files and essentially the system prompt that we're going to be using for our model. So here you can see that I have this create start message. And then if a welcome message is provided, I'm going to be also including it to the messages and return the list of the available messages. So what is the start message and how we build this? So you can see that we are passing in the list of files that will be created from our file folder. And here I have essentially a format for the template of the files. So for each file, I'm going to be creating this XML like markup that will create the file, then the name, and then the content of the file. Why I'm doing this? Mostly because I'm going to be using this as a context to our LOM 
to understand the files and what each file contains. And to show you that a bit better, let's walk through to through the starting prompt. So here you can see that I have a very simple prompt. Since this is a very powerful model, I found that working or writing these long prompts didn't work that well as they used to. Now models are pretty good and they can infer a lot of the information that you want to pass in. You just need to give them the correct context for them to work with. And here is the context that I'm giving. The user is having a conversation about their files. Here's the content of their files. Try to be helpful and answer their questions. And here I'm passing in a tag with the files. So you can think of the starting prompt with this, what you're seeing on the screen. And essentially for each file that we have, we are going to be having this file template along with the contents of the files that I have. The app.py file contains the Streamlit UI application logic. And in this file, we are essentially getting everything together. So here you can see that I start with a lot of imports from the Cogvault the files. And the first thing that I'm defining here is the welcome message. Hello, how can I help you today? This will be the message that the chatbot is going to be saying to you when you start the application. Then I have some configuration for the page config, the name of the app, and some sidebar action. Other than that, I have a header and a subheader with the essentially sub name or sub message for the application. And then the first thing that you see here is that I want to load the files. And in this case, we have these two files. One is a markdown file and then is my own resume. I'm going to show you the files in a bit when we start the application. And then I'm creating the chat history using the files and the welcome message by calling the create history function. Then I'm going to be listing into the sidebar the files that I have currently running. And then for each message, while I'm skipping the first one, since this is going to be containing the file information for the model, I want to have a look at the role of the user. And if it is a user, I'm going to be uh, providing this nice penguin emoji. And otherwise, I'm going to be adding the robot avatar. So I want essentially each chat message to be represented as a markdown file. And when I type in a message within the prompt or input that I'm going to show you at the bottom of the screen, I want this also be do represented as a markdown. And when this is added from the response of the assistant, I want this to be getting the prompt and then use the current history of the messages that we have to ask the chatbot to essentially answer the prompt that the user is having. To run the application, I need to be using the Streamlit and the UV package manager. I'm going to be running UV run Streamlit run app. And once you run this, this will start the browser and give you the UI interface for the application. Here on the sidebar, you can see the loaded files and those files are going to be used for your model. The great thing about our chatbot is that you can add the files to the data directory and the application is going to be parsing them and passing in to the chatbot. So in my case, I've added two files. One is my resume or CV and the other one is a markdown file, which contains a very small excerpt from building effective agents blog post by Anthropic. When I tried to add the complete blog post into a markdown file, the chatbot was getting a lot of confusion and wasn't able to answer the questions correctly. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can fix that using a Rack application. But in this case, I've set just a small excerpt of text from here. And the other file is my resume, which is uh, very different compared to the first file that I've shown you. And here you can see that I have some sort of structure and this file contains some text. Of course, it is just two different pages. Let's try the chatbot and start with a simple question. What is the GitHub username for 
Ben Evin. So you can see that the bot accurately found that my username is curiously. And let's ask something else. Does Venelin have a YouTube channel? And you can see that we removed the thinking portion of the response right here. And we started a new one. And the chatbot answered, yes, Venelin has a YouTube channel. According to his resume, you can find his channel at youtube.com, Venelin Volkov. He is also listed as Venelin Volkov on the platform. Great. Let's ask the chatbot about the other file. What is the definition of agents? Okay, so the response here shifted drastically to using the building, building effective agents markdown file. And you can see within the thinking process that the model also shifted its focus on this file. And it gave us this very nice difference of definitions of workflows and agents, something that is found in the excerpt that I've shown you. So this bot with the R1 14 billion parameter model works quite well in a local setting. If you want to get full access to the source code of the application that I've shown you and become a better AI and machine learning engineer, please join ML Expert Pro during February 7th to 9th. We're going to go through how you can build such applications and I'm going to show you how you can even create agents and how you can find your AOMs. Here I have a very simple schedule of what we are going to be covering. We're going to go through production ready ML engineering and how to build machine learning pipelines. Then we're going to be talking about AOMs and how to effectively use them and choose the right one for you. And finally, we're going to be building the chatbot that I've shown you then how to build a rack application agents and finish with how you can fine tune an LOM. So if you want to become better AI and machine learning engineer, join ML Expert Pro. Thank you. So this is it for this video. We've seen how you can build a completely local AI application that allows you to chat with your private files. We've been using the DeepSeq R1 distill model that allows you to have deeper thinking and reasoning about the questions that you have about your files and a streamlit UI application that allows you to get to talk to your files a bit easier. And we've seen how you can essentially get everything together to build the application that I've shown you throughout this video. Thank you for watching guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that is free that I'm going to link down into the description of this video. Join the ML Expert Pro for the upcoming live bootcamp and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.